Hi everyone, it's Adam with Milo's Restoration, and today I am back with another video in the series that I said that I was going to do. Um, not the furniture flipping, but a paint talk with another client project here. I've got somebody who had a coffee table that had sentimental value to them. Wasn't really doing, you know, wasn't really part of their style anymore, but they wanted to, to keep it because it, you know, was something that they had gotten as like a wedding present. And so they asked me to paint it. They wanted like a grayish green. So I gave them three colors that I kind of thought were working pretty well and pretty popular with a lot of designers and stuff like that that I know now. And those were Castle Gray, Pigeon, and I believe um, there was one other green, but I don't really remember the name of it right now. But they chose Castle Gray. They thought that was a good color. It's like a greenish gray. It's it's pretty... I'd say it's closer to neutral than it is green. But it's a nice color, though. I like it a lot. And so I got it mixed up in Command and Satin, and that's what I'm going to be using for this project. But what you see me doing now is just preparing it for paint. You know, it had no wax on it. It was just like a clear coat. So I just started sanding it. I sanded off a lot of the old finish on the tabletop. A little bit less on, you know, the base, but still a good bit because I had to bondo so many little, you know, dings and nicks and other stuff like that just from the years. And also just due to the natural character of the wood that I didn't think would look good, you know, with a painted surface. So that's what I'm doing here. You know, I'm sanding down all that Bondo, sanding the spindles, and everything like that. So this is just BIN primer here I'm mixing up, and I sprayed it. And here's where my mistakes kind of began. You know, it cooled down here in Louisiana a little bit, and I was like, oh man, it's wonderful. I'm just going to paint outside. Uh, no, I mean, really, I shouldn't have done that. It, it just, I didn't realize how much my painting results had improved when I started painting in, outside, inside as opposed to outside, just because of the extractor fans and everything. You know, you can do your your um your first coats outside i think that that's fine but i think for your final coat when you're trying to avoid any kind of nibs or dust or anything like that getting in the surface you want to wait either till about four or five o'clock right before dark and do your final coat or you want to spray it in a covered area at least and you know, those extractor fans are not just to keep the the paint like the paint out of the garage or wherever you're spraying. They're also to help extract overspray that will land back on your surface. And I kind of learned that, you know, in this project, which is that with overspray, if you don't have something that's extracting it, all of that's going back on your project, especially in something like this where there's a lot of angles to it. You can turn down your pressure and you can turn down, you know, your fluid and that'll help. But still, it's just, you know, if the paint's drying really quickly, especially like Command, you're going to have a problem with that. So in my opinion, spraying large flat surfaces can be one of the most challenging, not just because of the fact that you can see a lot of the imperfections, but also because, especially like on a table, if you don't detach the top from the bottom, as you're spraying all those other angles, either the top or the bottom is going to receive overspray with a fast drying product. And I think as a furniture flipper, you need to be using fast drying products. 
it's not mandatory, you know, like you can use them with urethane and stuff like that. But I think that, you know, we should really be trying to learn how to maximize our time. And there's plenty of good products out there that dry pretty quickly. You know, you don't have to use something like Benjamin Moore Advance or, you know, even Bear Paint. I would stay away from anything from Home Depot or Lowe's, generally speaking, except for primers, obviously. But, you know, I really think that using something like Command is good, but you might have to adjust it a little bit to work in your situation to make it dry slow enough to where you have time to finish spraying it before it flashes off and you're you're stuck with a rough surface on primer like this it doesn't matter you're going to sand it anyway if you weren't planning on sanding it it'd be a different scenario but you know i just use a flat uh sanding pad on the surfaces and i sand with the grain um i usually don't i, I usually like to use hard pads or something like that that sanding sponge that i'm using is a little firmer than the one on my surf prep and for contoured surfaces i'll use the surf prep Just mixing up the first batch of command in Castle Gray here. Uh, thinned it with about five to ten percent somewhere, maybe seven or eight percent water. I try to stay well below ten percent, and here I am spraying outside. Shouldn't have done that, but you know, I thought maybe it worked since it was kind of cool, and it did. It was a little bit rough, and I had to to fix it, and it's better now. By the time that I took it inside for the final coat. You know, I guess for the first two, like I said, the first coat or two, it doesn't really matter. If you're if you're gonna wait till that final coat to get a really really smooth surface, I think that you could probably save yourself a little bit of trouble and spray outside if you want to. But just keep that in mind. You know, I, me personally, I think that I'm gonna stick to spraying inside as long as I have good instructor fans and trying to pull out the fumes and everything. I will say with those hoses going outside you know to a neighbor or something like that it, it does look like i'm doing some kind of like uh asbestos related drywall extraction or something like that it, it looks pretty serious but it's really just you know extractor hoses running outside it, it it just looks a little bit more intimidating than it is i guess it's the only thing bad about it other than that though you know it's no different from painting outside if i was painting outside you know the overspray is going in the air and if I'm extracting it outside, it doesn't matter. The, you even have a better opportunity because you can put filters on it. So if you live in a, in a close quartered area, that could be a good idea. I have a little bit of space between me and my neighbors, so I'm not too, too worried about it. And not to mention most of these products are gonna dry fall before you know 10 or 15 feet, it's just gonna be dust. So when I spray little pieces like this that have a lot of angles on them, you know, I try to spray them one time up, one time down. And if I'm just doing two coats, you know, I'll spray it. The final coat will be the way that the person's going to be viewing it. In this case, this was the first coat, so I just 
flipped it on its uh on the you know where the where the table would connect at and i sprayed it upside down and i think that works pretty good i try to turn my sprayer down and get in all the angles i'm really just trying to get coverage of paint i'm not too worried about you know all the overspray blasting everywhere and just all of that i'm really just trying to get the color down and then you know the finish coat will probably be more of a uh, a meticulous process but it's not really that necessary in the sense that if you're just trying to get the color on there like if you're gonna sand it, it it doesn't really matter but if you're trying to get away without sanding it which a lot of people do then I'd recommend either you know trying to put a lot more paint on it and just trying to keep it wet for as long as you can or using a product like Floetrol but I just I haven't really had much luck with products like Floetrol probably because I put them in cheap paints but I think that generally speaking I just try to add as little water as possible because that also influences dry time and you know you want that amount of time where the paint has enough time to level out but you're not just waiting around for the paint to dry and that's kind of one of the challenges with a lot of products it's also good to find a product that is pretty viscous that way that whenever you spray it it lands on the surface flat and it's it doesn't need a whole lot of time but you know i'm just starting the sanding now on the first coat just a surf prep fine pad probably maybe medium plus somewhere between you know 280 320 grit probably higher than that probably a little bit like 3 320 340 maybe they have a weird kind of proprietary system for their sandpaper and i don't really understand it but i like it you know i'm fine with it uh i haven't had too many issues with surf prep sandpaper since i've learned how to use it properly their pads don't last incredibly long but that's okay i just kind of budget you know a couple of those in each job you're going to tear them up running them on the surface like that and you know one thing to consider is that like i'm moving the the sander really fast and everything if you're using anything probably below a 300 grit surface 300 grit paper and you're moving that quickly you're definitely going to see sanding swirls especially if you're using a clear coat so i like to stay above that 320 grit just because of the fact that you don't you're not going to get sanding swirls in it so i started off by spraying this like the table assembled and i actually did another coat which is not usual i usually try to stick to two coats but i should have detached it and sprayed the two separately because whenever i finished i noticed that the bottom had a rough feel to it and that was because of the fact that that overspray was blasting on top of it as it dried and it was still it was already kind of drying so by the time that overspray hit it it was just like like almost like a like a high grit sandpaper you know and just it looked good but not really what i want to give to somebody especially since you know most people the first thing you do when they get a table is they rub their hand over it you know just if it feels rough it it's not really a good piece to turn over to somebody You can't really see it but behind me there's like an inspection light uh, I mean I don't even really it's not an inspection light it's just like a Home Depot Craftsman light or I mean Lowe's Craftsman light probably you know a hundred bucks 
and they're pretty bright. I set them at an angle and I kind of shine them on the top of the surface to see better what I'm painting. Didn't plan for this, but had to do another coat. I detached the base, put both extractor fans on, tried to get enough paint on there, and it, it worked out better that time. And then I put the hardware back in. So they have some little finished nails, and I, just through wood filling and everything like that, I had covered them up where the holes were, so I had to drill new holes. And I just drilled a hole and just used a hammer to knock it in, just being careful with it, you know? So after I finished this, I got the uh, coffee table staged up outside and put everything back in. Had to get some new screws for the bottom, but other than that, it's done. If you enjoy this content, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.